Hey fifth graders, happy Friday. Um, this is your optional Friday video. I just wanted to share with you kind of some cool things that I've um, seen in the past and kind of seen recently that tie directly in with invasive species. Um, and then we do have a little uh, surprise from Mr. Madsen, so I'll get into that in just a minute. Um, so, well, here we go, happy Friday. So the first thing I do want to share with you is actually this really cool um, thing I learned about at the conference that I went to back this fall in October. Um, and I went to the program and I was not expecting to learn something like this, but it was super cool. Um, so this week we've been talking about invasive species and you just created your most unwanted poster about that. Um, and so that was a really a great project for you to tackle. So thank you for doing that. Um, but there is one prevention method that I did not talk about in my earlier video. Um, the reason being is because this is a pretty new one and I wanted to kind of save it for this optional Friday video because I think it is a pretty neat tactic. So what they have started to do is they have actually started to train dogs to smell out invasive species. It's true. It's true. Um, just like we have dogs that can sniff out things at airports or food or, you know, help find people and smell people and track people, they have started to train dogs to smell out invasive species. So let me switch over here. Um, and this is, well, this is Mac, of course. He was the end of my video um, from last Friday. Isn't he so cute? He is not trying to smell invasive species. He just runs around. Um, but there are invasive species sniffing dogs. And so they help uh, people find and locate invasive species. And the way that they train these dogs is just like they train any other kind of dogs. What they do is they present the smell, um, whatever invasive species they're trying to locate. And then they say, okay, go find it, you know, and then they try and when they track it down, when they find it, then they give them a treat. Now, I actually saw a live demonstration of this at that conference I went to back in the fall. And they brought in one of these young dogs that can go out and he can sniff. I think it was up to 30 different kinds of invasive species. Um, so it was really remarkable. They had him track down um, one of the species in the room and it was really cool. He, I mean, he found him so quick. Um, they also help with mapping. So sometimes invasive species are in a really big area. They're already established and scientists want to track and monitor if it's growing or if it's decreasing in size. And so sometimes they help by making maps. Um, and one of their greatest uses is and around Minnesota and the Great Lakes area is to help detect things that we can't really see. So for instance, um, zebra mussels, when they have offspring, their um, eggs are first microscopic, meaning they cannot be seen with the human eye. But sometimes they get stuck in Boats. And so if you are taking your boat out of the water, like at a public launch, sometimes you will encounter a person from the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. And they tell you, you know, to clean and drain and dry your boat, meaning to dump out any water that's in there um, that might be clinging to it because sometimes zebra mussel eggs can be within there. So what they started to do is bring these dogs to those boat launches as well. And so they are great for sniffing out these zebra mussels, things that humans can't even see. And they've actually done tests and they have outperformed humans. So they have 100% of the time in the trials that they did it caught the boat with the invasive species. Whereas humans were only at about 75%. And so that is a big difference. And so uh, I just thought, I mean, we all love dogs. And now we can really put them to use in a different, unique way. And it really just shows how amazing their noses are. Um, so it's a really neat thing. Um, now, Mr. Madsen, he actually went to Rockford Middle School to take pictures of our trees for us. So first we'll have the American Mountain Ash, then we'll go to our Burr Oak, and then our Honey Locust as per usual. Um, so again, you can do these for your trees outside too. So post your videos to the Phenology Friday Flipgrid, or Phenology Everyday Flipgrid, sorry, typo there. Um, First, we are at our um, American Mountain Ash. Yes, these fruits are still hanging on. Um, Mr. Madsen got some great close-up shots of those fruits. And yes, they are well past ripe. Um, so our answer there, nope, they have not done a recent, recent fruit or seed drop. Not yet, but they're probably going to lose them soon. Um, and then in the top right corner here, we have our bud. And it is looking a little bit bigger, I think, than the last time we checked in. So it's probably getting pretty close here. Um, and then, of course, the overall tree on the left. So, um, again, this one might be one of my favorites. 
I just love the smooth bark. So no budding leaf buds yet, but they are close. All right, on to number two. We have our burr oak, um, and you can see the nice little thing is still hanging there, a little decoration. So yes, this is our burr oak. Um, but on the way, Mr. Madsen caught a little glimpse, and you can see these little pops of green within here starting to pop out of our rain garden that we have here. Um, so it looks like a lot of dead straw and things like that, but green is on its way. Um, and then here again, we have the buds that kind of look like stubby toes. Um, those don't look quite as close yet, um, but that is our burr oak miss it. All right, now to the last one. We have our honey locust, and this is the one that started to look like it has way more branches now, and it's because these buds start to branch off, In they are a lot bigger than the other buds on the other trees, so it starts to make a pretty big difference on these trees. So I'm not sure which one will go first. I guess we'll have to keep taking pictures and keep posting them every Friday and seeing which tree is going to pop first, which one's going to have leaves. So you can go ahead, think about it, I don't know. What do you think? Um, all right. And that's going to be it for our Friday video today. But I did, again, just want to um, talk about how awesome these dogs are against these invasive species. This is from the Sierra Club, which is an outdoor, uh, like, a or I'm sorry, an environmental club that you can be a part of. And so here are the watercraft inspectors. I just love his little booties. I mean, who would not love you know, seeing a little dog at a boat launch, it definitely makes them probably a little bit happier. So they are sniffing out the enemy. Um, I thought that this stat was crazy, that the invasive species cost the United States economy over $120 billion per year. That's so much money. Um, so again, that comes from a lot of different sources. But um, we do, I asked the guys that were giving the conference about the dogs, about the uh, dogs. I was like, well, do they ever get distracted? Like when they're out sniffing in fields and he said, oh yeah, you know, we sometimes just get a lot of dogs that run and they sniff out scat and they find poop, which is very dog-like, but um, so they definitely do get distracted, but they're pretty good. And it's all just based on positive reinforcement saying, hey, you did it. Good job. Here's a treat. Hey, you did it. Good job. Here's a treat. So maybe I'll get my dog to uh, do something like that. Yeah. What do you think? You want to become a dog? Uh, invasive species hunting dog? Yeah. No. Okay. He's at his post. He likes to look out the window. So hopefully you enjoyed this Friday's optional video. Um, I'll come back next Friday. We'll go back into my prairie with a couple different um, things and photos. And we'll talk about aspen tree stands. So see ya.